Good afternoon, everyone. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Maribel A. Baldonado. I'm the, your Project Development Officer to DRIM Coordinator and a Child Protection Advocate. So this afternoon, um, allow me to present to you um, Child Protection Policy in the Context of the Pandemic. Okay, so who is a child? So, all human beings under the age of 18, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, and ability or disability is considered a child. Now, children, according to the UNCRC definition, are those below 18 years old, as I have mentioned a while ago. This international instrument has a local counterpart legislation, no, which is Republic Act 7610 or the Special Protection of Children Against Abuse, Exploitation, Discrimination, which defines Filipino children as those under the age of 18 as well. Okay. So, what are the policies and frameworks? No, of the child protection policy. Um, the in Ginisha no, of course, we have our 1987 constitution. We have the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. We have the UN Convention on the Rights of Children with Disabilities. Of course, um, um, this, our children with disabilities are always included no, um, in the child protection policy. Then we have RA 7610, the Special Protection of Children Against Abuse, Exploitation, and Discrimination Act. We have Republic Act 9262 or the Anti-Violence Against Women and Their Children Act of 2004. We have the Child and Youth Welfare Code. And of course, we have our very own Dep and Child Protection Policy, you know, that's under Dep and Order Number 40 Series of 2012. So as we speak, um, wala pagid ina siya ma, ma ilisa, no? wala pagid ina siya ma, ma um, supersede. So, um, even in spite of the pandemic, which has changed the landscape of child protection policy because um, it has included a lot of other variables and highlighted as well some of the not so good practices that were being done, you know, um, against our children in their own homes. So later on, we will um, um, further discuss about this. All right, so there are four main categories of children's rights now under the United Nations um, CRC or UNCRC or Convention on the Rights of the Child or Children. So we have survival, we have protection, development, and participation. So these are the more the four main um, um, rights of a child. No survival. It is innate within them. Sangin bata la palang sila no or ari palang sila ganhi sa sinapukunan sang mga mothers no for for mothers like myself no ara palang sa akon cha no um protected na ang akon bata no may ara na siya sang innate um, innate right nga kinahanglan mag-survive siya. No? So what are these things that would make a child survive? Next is protection. Protection against what? You know, protection against abuses. Protection against um, all the other variables that could hurt a child. No, it's not only physical but it would also involve um, emotional, psychological and other things. And development. And development, dira siya nagasulod ang aton nga education. Ibig sabihin that um, we are um, uh, looking after the um, ang paghubog sa aton ng mga kabataan. In what way? No? So, we ensure that um, at a certain age, they are already um, going to school. Ano pagid ang mga they are already um they are already helped or endeavored to learn 
a lot of things even even while at, still at home no and then we have also participation we ensure that we always ask them no we involve them in every activity that we have no especially um sa aton nga sa aton nga schools no even here in the division office we always um in the past, ang wala pa kita ng pandemic, or even gan isang daw nag ayo ayo na ang pandemic, no? Um, learners or or children were asked, or in fact, um, asked to join no activities, no? That would that would um um help them, you know, and um clearly um get their um participation, not only because um we need them um to participate in our activities but as well as to to really get to know them through um um ano ang ilang uh, paghatag sang ilang uh, tempo um paghatag sang ilang uh, own insights ano ano gid bala ang sa isa ka, para sa isa ka bata sa mata sa isa ka bata ano gid bala ang 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 pwede na niya mabuli no sa sa um, education sector no so we we always um ensure that uh we ask them to participate so these four rights are the main rights no main four rights nga um um kinanglan aton gid nga i, i, i highlight no nga maangkon gid sa isa ka bata ina siya okay so next so Amo na ni siya ang mga 10 there's still actually there are still more but these are are one of the few no that uh, that uh, the child has no innate in nature in ang child's rights so number 1 to be born to have a name and nationality so um if you have read in the news lately no a bill i think was signed already na di ba sa una ang mga ang mga mga bata nga nakikita lang dira sa mga kundiin nga nga unknown ang mga parents no um may tawag sina sa ila no pero hindi ko na lang pag-ihambal diri but then again when that um bill was um made into law no um they are, they have they have accorded they have been accorded with with certain rights nga um ma consider na sila nga isa sila ka um, individual nga bata nga may ara sang right nga makaangkon sang iya nga own nga personality or individuality so number 2 to be free to have a family who will take care of, of them to to have a good education to develop potentials through what no so mo nagin hamba ko kagina nga um participation we develop their potentials their abilities maximize ang mga nakikita ta sa ila nga pwede ma enhance no nga mga capabilities or even skills so um we ask them to participate next is to have enough food no shelter a healthy and active body so <laughs> hindi na ganit ni kinahanglan gid pag discuss because you know it goes without saying that these are these are really really um, needed in order for a child to survive number 6 to be given the opportunity for play and leisure ano so yanda na no sa so, pandemic kita my god you know children are not allowed to go out but but um since the development of the vaccine and all that so um children are now allowed to go to go out of the house and then we are lucky kasi ang vaccine is available although there are some nga mga bata nga hindi pa rin nakapavaccine up to this time no um uh, manami kita ni kung kita man sa education sector makabuli kita nga maka um, facilitate no ma advocate nato nga makapavaccine sila because this is also one way of giving them protection so para um maka all out sila sang ginatawag na opportunity for play and leisure nga hindi sila magpinanundum nga base makakuha sila sang covid uh, sa gwa no uh, so that's why na manami kita ni ko encourage naton ang mga parents naton sa mga schools naton nga ila mga kabataan nga hindi pa bakunado nga magpabakuna na okay so number 7 to be given protection against abuse danger and violence brought by war and conflict Number eight, to live in a peaceful community. 
Number nine, to be defended and assisted by the government. Of course, no, there's so many laws that would um, protect no, the rights of the children. And number 10, to be able to express my own views. No? So, balik naman kita sa participation. Where they are allowed to participate and um, they are allowed to voice their opinions. They are allowed, we ask them what they feel, what they think. Kagkung ano ang, ma ang maayo para sa ila. No? I hope that we are in our schools, no? We are affording our children those rights. Next. Okay. So, prior to the pandemic, of course, we all know that we, we have been living really freely, no? We go wherever, wherever we want to go, you know. Uh, bisa na mga activities natin in school, mga seminars natin, no? left and right, and then we travel, we attend mga seminars um, in other in other places, we go to the regional office, and the children as well are going to school. So, ang number one gidya ngagin ngagin ano ngagin gapos or gin gin affectuhan sin ng pandemic is is of course ang ato na children. Um, of course, Deb and endeavored to really to really implement no inang ginatawag tayong basic education learning continuity plan in light of the um, COVID-19 pandemic. And all of a sudden, while we all have that freedom, we find ourselves box, no? Katulad si ng picture, no? Nga ina, no? Wherein the child is na shackled, no? Mayara siya sa ano ina, bakal, nga hindi siya makagwak, no? At the same time, she's being asked to study in the confines of her of her own room no uh, may ara may ara sa mga while sang una wala na we don't spend money to buy mga alcohol and mga face mask kag mga ano pa dra mga covid essentials now you know we we really are forced to buy them because they became they became a necessity for us no so there was a big change in the landscape of the um um sa mga buhi sa isa kabata no naglain gidya ang ila nga mga buhi kung kita nga adults affected kita what more ang mga kabataan no okay so what did the data say says data says during the lockdown period in 2020 there was an increase in online sexual exploitation of children as well as child trafficking. Nga man nga nagkakatabo ini. Why? Because aside from we are already in the age of technology or digitization, um, there was a proliferation in the use of social media because um, that's the only way where we can, we, we can um, communicate socially, where we can um, express ourselves. And um, the use of, of, of the, the social media was made um, a vessel or a vehicle for online sexual exploitation. So, children being children, they don't know that they're already being exploited. And there are some um, scrupulous individuals na naga take advantage sang weakness ng aton ng mga children and as well as child trafficking. No? Of course, we all know that... Um, so start ang pandemic, no? And actually, even up to now, um, because of inflation, soaring prices, and all that, damo mga, mga ginikanan ang nadulaan sa mga trabaho. So, hindi ginatong madula nga anhon, because biskan sa news, nagagwa nga ang mga kabataan ginahimo sa, they are involved in mga, um, child labor, you know, mga pariusin na. And as well as ang child trafficking gani. Ano ang child trafficking? No, ginaingan nyo ang mga bata ang kumakunwari, magkadto sa mga ibang nga lugar para maka, makatrabaho dito, mangita sa ma maayong nga trabaho. Pero sa tutuod lang, wala man gali sila ginapangita sa maayong nga trabaho, kundi ginahimo sila sa mga sexual slaves or ginasexual abuse sila. Okay, so next. Ano pagitan ginahambal sang data no cases of 
OSAEC in the Philippines increase no online sexual abuse in Asia no by 264.6% no or 202,605 more reports during the imposition of the enhanced community quarantine from March to May 2020 no compared to the 76,561 cases during the same period in 2019 no this is according to the department of justice no okay of course citing citing data from the u.s based national center for missing and exploited children no this is from save the children data as well so can you imagine naman sexual abuse gil no well that eh, children um ano gani um spends what pilaka hours in in the school but now they spend all of their time in their own houses. So, um, masubo, do masubo man pa ng dumon, but th that is the real scenario. No, they're being used as sexual pawns in, in the setting of, in the online setting. So, social media might probably also be, be good for some but for our children, though hindi gid siya manami, kay bangod, most of the children were abused. So, um, muna gid ang gina-encourage na itong tanit sa aton mga teachers, no, um, kasi nagatulok lang kita sa ginatawag ta ng mga policies. But policies are, are not meant to be just read. Policies are meant to be implemented, no. Um, we need to innovate. We need to take more steps now to ensure that these children are protected. So, paano? Kasi, you know, we need to, we really need to walk an extra mile. Kung balikan natin ang the most basic, no, even ang aton nga DO number 40, um, ano dira mga suggested activities that would advocate um, child protection and um, advocate um, child's rights. But with the advent of the pandemic, sangga katabo yan da sa pandemic, there's still a lot of things that we can do. Small things would create big ripples. So we need to move forward and do an extra mile for one child if the child can be saved by our own hand. Okay, so moving forward. Aside from sexual abuse, ano pagin? No data says. Also from Save the Children, violence against children at home spiked during the pandemic and these are perpetrated mostly by parents and caregivers. Nga man ba ay nag sina, no? Because, um, like I mentioned earlier, no, there, there are changes in the, there are changes in the dynamics, no, at home. Okay, while sang una, um, more hours are spent, are spent, no, at, uh, in the, um, school, in school, yan da, children are, are, are in their own homes. And parents, as well, have a hard time, uh, I guess, dealing with the fact that the children are, are home, you know, from sun, sun down to sun up, no? Ara amad bal, ano, and then, Suddenly, there are different dynamics at home, you know, we, uh, parents and children discover things, you know, uh, from, from each other. Like, ayaw ba, ang akong galit nanay, no? Example lang eh, ayaw ba, ang akong galit nanay, matama, din niya saya, kayo wala, kayo isa ka pang hugas tinggan, you know, for example, eh, mambal mo lang nanay, ayaw ang bata ko galit, ya, bastos, galit niya ang bakba si niya, kayo na wala, ako nakabati sa iya sa una nga nang amo na siya magpanghambal o nagapamuyayaw ina siya you know uh, parents and children discover a lot of things you know while being together because um syempre naga kung nagalakat ang tawo adlaw adlaw we only spend a little time we only spend a little time when we get home but but sang nag pandemic kita especially during lockdown kag ara tanan sa balay you no know, we discover so many things sa aton ng mga bata, sa aton ng mga upod sa balay because we are there most of the time. And because um, on economic on the economic side, um, 
mostly some parents are left um, without work. No, damo ang nag-close na mga mga industries, mga businesses, no, lucky for those in the government like us na biska nagka-lockdown na at lahat, you know, we still have our jobs, we're still earning, but those who are in the um, private sectors, no, siguro mainit na ang ulo sa mga parents nila and then there's a lot of um, difficulties experienced by the family at home. That's probably one of the reasons why violence um, violence is at the very um, uh, is periphery in their own homes. No, so those are the things that um, that are being suffered by our children. Okay, so what else? Data says. And this is from the UNICEF.org. The impact of COVID-19 on children and young people's mental health and well-being continues to weigh heavily. According to the latest available data from the UNICEF, globally, at least 1 in 7 children have been directly affected by lockdowns, while more than 1.6 billion children have suffered some loss of education. Kasi syempre, Biska naghambal kita ng may arak kita sang ginatawag na plan for the continuation of um, um, basic education. No, we have the um, education in emergency or we have the learning continuity plan that was um, being followed by the Department of Education, especially at the start of the pandemic. But still, no, the transition of um, having the face to face classes from to um, being at home and answering the modules or listening to the teachers online or, or whatever modalities that is being followed by the school, it has caused a um, tremendous sense of um, uh, ano bala sa mga bata nga, no, medyo nadula ang ilang, uh, they're not uh, being grounded anymore. No? So, do, like what we see in the picture, do nagdamo ang ila mga palalimban, no? Do kung sa una kaya nila ang ila nga klase sa face-to-face, -face, sang nag-modular sila, kag sang nag, sang nag, ano sila, sang nag um, online class sila, do, do naggamo ang ila nga panong duma, no? And, and some children even opted to really stop schooling, no? Because there's a lot of variables involved, like for example, um, they don't really have the means to, to buy the necessities to join the online class. Or uh, I think it all boils down to economics, no? And as well as having difficulty listening to teachers online, that like what we're doing right now, no? we are and, and doing an online um, lecture or doing an online presentation. And um, I'm, record, I'm recording this, by the way, because <laughs> I will not be available on the actual, on the actual conduct of the activity, but um, well, I hope that I have imparted to you um, some thoughts that will keep you going in the implementation of your um, child protection policy. So aside from um, the effect on, on disruption of education, also we have the um, psychological impact, no? the disruption of routines, education, recreation, as well as concern for family income and health is leaving many young people afraid, angry, and concerned for the future. So, Kung sa una, ang hila lang na paligban, hila mga assignment, suddenly sa nag-pandemic kita, nandamo ang hila nga palaligban. No? Tapos maybe nakita nila nga ang hila mga ginikana, nagapalibog man. Most especially those um, parents na, na nadulaan sa mga trabaho bala. Kasi siguro mo na, really naway sa balay, nagadiniskosyo, no? Kung saan, di na sila makuha sa ila mga inupanindahan, no? mga parihusin na, or how they will be able to survive because actually during the start of the pandemic there's a lot of uncertainties that that you know that were being experienced by everyone this is not only here in the philippines but we all know that this is global you no know? aside from the disruption of all these activities that we used to enjoy there's also the the, the uh, ano nagagamo pagid sa atong pag-isip will I be able to survive or not? Ang mga pagitan na nagpagamu sa mga bata. 
isang una wala pa vaccine eh. so they they they're afraid then no? and they they probably think bo na no na ini basi mapatay ako you know may mga muna muna no so there's there's so many um ano there's there's so many fears there's just a lot of fears no sa ilang mga panindoman so muna pagit ang mga impact or effects sa 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 covid no sa pandemic okay so more data no Children who are enrolled face many challenges to effective learning under the current distance learning modality. So, sang una ini siya. May ara online, may ara sang modular, may ara sang hybrid. And then yan, that recently, most recently, we have already the limited face-to-face. So, can you just imagine all this transition from one SLM to another and to another, di ba? So, para kung, kung ikaw siguro ang bata, kung hindi ka masyado maka-adapt sa situation or sa environment, parang doon naalog na gidyangi mo, nga pa nung duman, ay nalo na ini. Yan, dagani nga si Mana, F to F ko dyan. Sa masunod nga si Mana, balik naman akong module. So, sa masunod naman nga si Mana, makadto naman ako sa si eskulahan no but i would like to think no as um, as one of the actually, i i am one of the validators or members of the composite team i would i would like to take this um f2f um classes or implementation as a positive sign um while the transition um is is really gonna um make an impact on the participants of these face-to-face -face classes um at the same time i would like also to think that um this will give this will give hope this will give a uh, motivation and inspiration to 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 all our learners nga ay pwede na ako yung makagwa pwede na ako makasocialize no pwede ko na makita akong teachers akong friends no and there's a lot of possibilities good possibilities that um, that will happen along the way. So, we would like our, our children to think that. No? Next is, um, data says, such challenges are greater for lower income households of limited resources for better access. Sang una, no, nabudlayan gid sila, kay because gani, ang access to education is the number one um, question. Paano natin ini Kung ako ang ginikanan, paano maka-eskwela ang akong bata? Hindi man ako maka-afford magbakal sa laptop, hindi man ako maka-afford magbakal sa sa ano, sa sa cellphone, sa smartphone na lang. But lo and behold, no, luckily we have a lot of um donations received already, no? And and uh, I would like to think that out of the many hot percent percentage of children um going to school nga daw damo naman ang naka-avail sa aton nga mga gadgets no nga paggagamiton sa mga bata so they have better access to education so next is there's a high demand for returning to in-person classes and such demand is higher for lower income household and women so muni na gani yan that no we are already um starting um for some schools, they are already implementing face-to-face, -face, but for some, they are still um, vying for approval from the regional office. But I believe, or we believe, that all schools will later on implement face-to-face -face or in-person classes. So, as you can see here, the demand is higher for, for lower-income households and women because it's easier for, for lower-income households to send their children um face to face already no mabud maiwat ang modular maiwat ang 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 mga online classes for so many reasons no and um for the two years that we've been experiencing this we all know already there are a lot of reasons why nabudlayan gid ya ang ang isa ka uh, ang parents no mag cope sa um to give the 100 support para sa mga bata nila when it comes to um, education. And then next is fear for viruses are still of concern among some households in the return to school. So that's why, Ganina, we, we have the 
um, before sa aton nga tool, no, we are we are asking for the um the consent and waiver of the parents nga they are really allowing their children to come to school. Although yan da sa bago na itong hatul, um, ginapasan yung mangya po naton nga kinahanglan, ang mga ginikanan may aragidas ang 100% nga ihibalo. Kung ano bala ini ang face-to-face -face na ito nga ginatawag. So, um, orientation from the school, no? The school is giving orientation to to the parents kung ano ang mga protocols nga pagagamiton, ano ang mga ano ang mga um, mga tangible things in the school na makahambal gid sila nga ang mga bata na namon is very safe no ano bala ang pagfollow sa ginatawag naton nga minimum health standard no ang mga protocols kag ang mga pag pagcheck yar sang aton mga physical facilities as well as making sure that the teachers are all vaccinated although ang mga bata hindi sila sang wala sila gina gina ano um gina estrictuhan ko hindi gid sila makapabakuna pero gina encourage gid naton nga tani makapabakuna gid ang tanan nga mga kabataan most especially those who are participating in the face to face classes implementation okay so reaching students at their level with parents concerned that students will fall behind academically, it will be critical for the Department of Education to design curricula and programs that incorporate potential learning losses that may have occurred during distance learning, particularly because of the differential access to the internet and learning material. So, we all know this already because we have already experienced this one. But I would like to say also that the pandemic is just one disaster that has already happened. And this does not preclude that it might not happen in the future in a form of a different virus or in a form of a different disaster. That's why we are constantly preparing for it. And since we are, we have already experiencing it, and we are experiencing it now. We hope that in our plans, no, we include our um um we include development of initiatives or reforms, you know, that would that would help us, or that would support the different learning modalities, just in case something like this would happen in the future so teaching at the right level it is a promising evidence-based approach that will allow teachers to assess primary school students math and literacy acquisition and adjust their lessons based on students actual levels to strengthen their foundational skills so the department of education's main priority is to ensure continuity of learning even amidst continued challenges so now this found out that um, what is really important are the four R's no, according to our um, new SDS. Um, our schools should lean on, uh, um, ensure that these four R's are, 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 are being really implemented. So reading, writing, arithmetic, and write conduct. Mabalik din kita sa basics na kinanglan ang itong mga kabataan which is medyo maybe nadula siya sa sang nag uh, umpisa sa pandemic na ito no? kasi wala na nato natutukan ang reading. So maybe we have a lot of students who are non-readers. No? So um, ensure na ito na sa yanda nga, nga, nga kay mag-end na kita. No? But we ensure that yanda nga school year that we uh, focus more on these aspects so para we will be able to ensure na what was lost um, especially during the lockdown and grabe gid ang pag ano pag ano sang pandemic ma restore siya uh, unti unti no? and um, why am i talking about curriculum because it's, this is also one way of securing and, and, and saying that um, our child, we are practicing 
child protection. Remember the four uh, basic rights of a child, no? and development is one of those. Okay, so we go to debt and child protection policy. Now, we have now the creation of the child protection unit and the child's rights and education's desk in the Department of Education. So that is DEPED order number 003, series of 2021. So it is a coordinating mechanism. No? The child protection unit strengthened the implementation of the DEPED child protection policy and child's rights in education's desk. It helps ensure that the rights of the child in basic education are respected, protected, promoted, and fulfilled in and by the department. So, um, I hope that we take the time to read this one no, para, ma, para mabalikan natin. Ang atun dapat balikan. Most especially, we are... We are um, Wala pa sa may nagwa nga bago, no? It's still DEP at 40, no? Series of 2015. So, balikan natin yon And also, um, ang akon nga bago lang ginahamba nga DEP at Order 003, 2021. Creation of DEP at um, DEP at Child Protection Unit, no? Um, creation pa lang na siya. So, um, I think uh, Mom Ivy will give you the template for your implementation plan. So um, we have, I think that we have to start from the basics again. No, uh, orient ourselves, remind ourselves that we have the child protection policy to be looked at positively. No, to help our children regain that lost, um, um, that lost, um, um. Motivation, you know, uh, I would like to think na patapos na ya ang pandemic, no, fingers crossed, but, um, yes, we thank God that, um, for those who us who are here, we thank God that we are still alive, no, alive and kicking, and, um, we hope that, um, SDO, the SDO team, of child protection, we hope that uh, the schools will uh, continue to really advocate um, child protection policy. So, um, amulang na, um, maybe, um, you know, we have some videos, we have some videos that, that might, or um, PowerPoint presentations that might um, uh, assist you, no, sa inyo nga mga, nga mga, um, action plans later on pag kung magubra ka mo. But, um, so, um, I hope that um, I have uh, imparted to you a little bit of my wisdom on child protection because um, wala giniga change on child's rights. It's still the same. But, um, and also, ang pagpalangga natin sa itong mga kabataan remains. So, I guess, kung may pagpalangga, may may ara sang gapush sa aton nga to, 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 to strive for more um, um, actions, to strive for more implementations on child protection. So, this is again Maribeth Baldonado. Thank you so much for listening and maayong hapon sa aton tanan.